Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 148 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. And this week I have six new Lit RPG reviews just for you folks at home. Before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to our latest Patreon supporters, Stephen Miller, for helping to support the podcast. Uh, thank you very much, man. You helped keep this podcast ad-free uh, and free for everybody to listen to uh, wherever they can find it, whether it's on uh, our Facebook page or it's on our our, our webpage, uh, LitRPGpodcast.com, or on, on, on Stitcher or on iTunes or Google Play, whatever. Um, you help make this possible to be to happen. So thank you, man. Okay, uh, the little RPG titles I have reviews for you for this week include uh, The Great Filter, a, po- a post-apocalyptic game-lit novel. Uh, also, the song Matron, a little bitty journey, Uniworld Online trilogy, book number three. So that'll be the last in that trilogy. Uh, after that, it'll be True Hero, Champions is playing book number one. This is a Russian translation. Um, after that, it'll be Rogue Games, a little bitty adventure. Then it'll be Realm of Noria, also another Russian translation, so two in one episode uh and it'll be then dungeon mauling which is the third book in the good guys series uh before we go into those reviews we're going to go into lit rpg news and in lit rpg news first i'll talk about hey look at the sweater see i got it uh, last we had some few snafus about getting uh, Christmas themed sweaters uh, that don't also match the green screen I use uh, to make me look ghostly. And so this week I got it done for you folks. It's a very Christmassy, Star Warsy themed sweater. So there you go. Um, promises have been fulfilled. Uh, in actual little RPG news, though, we have a few deals for you folks. A lot of authors are putting out special deals right now. Uh, a Christmas related to get you guys into their series. Uh, this includes a uh, the novel in the first novel in the Endless Online series. It'll be ninety nine cents until December the twenty fourth. It's one of those Kindle countdown deals, uh, so it might not apply to everybody in the entire world. Uh, it kind of depends on if you have Kindle Unlimited and if let you have those deals there. Uh, but if you do, this is ninety nine cents. It's a very nice novel, so go check it out. Also, ninety nine cents. And this one is a slightly better deal in that it's Caverns and Creatures, the first four volumes, the first four novels, I should say. Um, They are collected as an omnibus called Volume 1, and it's on sale for 99 cents as well. But it's also essentially four books uh, for 99 cents. Uh, So if you've never read this series, um, it is super duper hilariously funny. Um, It is also very potty humor centric, uh, adult language. Um, And if that's your kind of humor... I, I think you'll absolutely enjoy this. There are also audiobook versions of, the, of these novels. Um, and then it's going to be 99 cents till December the 24th. So go check this out. Um, it's one of my favorite humorous Liberty series that I, that I, I enjoy. But also I, I like that kind of humor. I like that Kevin Smith kind of humor. So just be aware, FYI. Okay. Uh, also now out as a, a free uh, novel uh, until uh, from, sorry, I should say from Friday, uh, December 21st to Sunday the 23rd is going to be Dave Willemar's uh, first book in his Greystone Chronicle series. Um, it's called uh, IO Online. Uh, so go check that out again. It's going to be F-R-E-E free uh, uh, from Friday the 21st until Sunday the 23rd of December. Uh, so I'm, I'm, go check it out. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite series as well. Um, it's also multiple series in the novel and, you know, so, and, so go check it out. Uh, also, uh, just in the spirit of giving, I also did a quick search for Primer Free and also 99 Cents Lit RPG. We'll have a link in the show notes, uh, but I'll definitely read them off to you right now. Uh, some free Lit RPG, and these are, again, Primer Free. So they're not like, necessarily deals. So, uh, people around the world should be able to find these for free. Uh, Alter World, Play to Live. The first book in that series is Primer Free. Um, Patch 17, uh, uh, the Realm of Archon book one in that series is also perma free. Um, and those two are all definitely free because like the, the rest of the series is, is a little on the expensive side. So they want to get you in, uh, to their series early, uh, get you addicted. Um, and they're definitely both very good series. Um, and also Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, a little bit of novella, um, is also, 
uh, a permanent free novel. So uh, 99 cents little RPG. And again, these are regularly priced 99 cents, but these are all very good deals. Also, um, Desert Runner, which is the first book in the Pateria Online series, is 99 cents. Accidental Thief is 99 cents. Uh, Extraction Protocol, which is a sci fi ish little RPG story, is 99 cents. And Dendron Crawl is also 99 cents. So all those titles are 99 cents. They're all very good books. Uh, so if you're looking for some holiday reading and you don't want to break the bank, these are all very good titles as well. Okay. So enough of those little RPG deals. Um, I recently did an author interview with Charles Dean, author of War Eternus and the Bathroom Night series, and also The Merchant of Tikpa and another series of his I haven't read. Um, it's now available uh, on the Liberty Podcast Facebook page, or on our webpage, on our YouTube page. Um, it was a really fun author interview. I, I should disclose Charles Dean as I've been friends for, for a while now. Um, so it was a slightly different vibe than the normal ones because usually when they do an author interview these are guys i haven't met before they're, they might, might have talked to them online a little bit i've read their stuff i'm usually fans of their things otherwise i don't do author interviews with people um but this one is definitely a little more casual uh charles dean talked about his writing philosophy how he uses philosoph uh, literal ph uh, philosophical concepts and economic models and and things like that in, in writing his characters and choosing how to develop them so it started out really high brow uh, and then it devolved into something more casual uh and if you've ever seen his um his podcast or his his, his, his video vlog drinking with charles it kind of devolved in that a little bit um in that we talked about some really odd stuff um also like um his love of beards why he dislikes goatees and which muppet he looks like uh and so it got really fun very interesting especially when we got into like the um questions from the audience kind of stuff um i should warn you though that charles uses adult language uh I, and even though i don't curse on the podcast like we're both adults we're both chatting things up and just be aware if you have little ears running around for you listen to this that you know those words might pop up so you might want to put in some headphones um but like i said really fun interview i had a good great time with it i uh, definitely encourage you to check it out of course uh the fourth book in the war return series which just came out not that long ago Okay, uh, also in Little BG News, uh, Mountain Dew Press also did an author interview uh, with one of their uh, authors, uh, Jay Boyce, the author of Touch of Power Siphon. So you can definitely go check that out. We'll link in the show notes for the Facebook page uh, in which you can see that. That's the Mountain Dew uh, Press Facebook page where you can see that was done as a um, Facebook Live interview. Uh, and so there are different comments from the audience and questions and uh, real-time responses and stuff. So it's definitely very fun uh as, as an interview got to learn some things about the author uh, jay that i didn't know before so good things okay um oh before i forget i have a couple christmas themed little bitty stories that i put together just for you folks in case you wanted something again holiday Christmassy theme that includes the goblin that stole xmas by apollo thorn uh that's honestly one of my favorite little bitty stories to read on a yearly basis around christmas um it, it, it's fun very Christmassy, and i also had a hand in you know, changing that title to The Goblin Who Stalks Us. So I'm um, also, I'll, I'll spread that. We actually have a link in it to the Brook Ball, I'm um, sorry, bookbrawl.com site is where the short story is uploaded to. I couldn't find it on um, Bro Road uh, or Amazon anymore. You might, this might be the only place you can find it. Uh, we also have Free Haven Online, Winter Dungeon Line book number three that just came out. It is very holiday, Christmassy themed galore. Uh, also Cooper's Christmas Carol, Caverns and Creatures, short story. Uh, this is again by the same author, Robert Bevan, who he does, a, uh, between the releases of his Caverns and Creatures stories, he does a ton of like short stories with the same characters. And this one is Christmassy themed. Uh, and it's definitely again, um, adult oriented, uh, a lot of, um, um, potty humor, cursing adult language. Uh, so just be aware of that as well. Uh, and also Sir Gawain, uh, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, a little bit of novella. Uh, which is also a Christmassy themed holiday kind of short story. So fun stuff if you're looking for some Christmas related or holiday themed lit RPG. Okay, uh, on to some stories that are out now. Um, just talked about a free haven online, Winter Dungeon Land, book number three. This came out this week. The author again uh, asked that we mention that it is holiday and Christmas related and themed. Um, so if you like that kind of stuff, if you've always liked those your, your MMOs where they do those holiday themes, uh, doing like December, November, um, you're probably gonna enjoy this a lot. So there you go. Uh, also out now is small, medium, big trouble written by Andrew Sipple. This is actually uh, the reason I mentioned this because, um, it's set in the threadbare universe. It's not with the same character threadbare, but it's also set in the thread. And I don't think that the author's, um, marketing it, um, 
to let people know that it's set in that very popular universe. Um, so it, it, it's a shame if people don't have take the time to, to read it. If they like Threadbare, if you like that universe, um, this is another story in that universe. So uh, just so you know, and, and again, that's mostly because again, the title is just small, medium, big trouble. So it doesn't say anything uh, in the title about being in the Threadbare universe, which is a shame because uh, it's a, it, people love that series. People love, really do. So uh, also out is Blackthorn, a beautiful nightmare written by Scotty Fuchs. It's um, one of Scotty Fuchs' oldest series, and it's finally on Azam. I've heard tons about it um, from various people. It's been on the Royal Road. It's been on a bunch of other places um, online for free for a very long time. And the author finally put it together, put it on Amazon as the first volume in that series. Um, so personally, I'm definitely looking forward to getting a chance to read it. Uh, so there you go. Also out now is Refuge, Land of Dreams, book number three, the third book in that series, as is the fifth book of the Stroke Tower series. That one's out now. So fans of that series are going to be super happy to hear that that one is out. Uh, it's called... You know what? I'm not trying to say that. Uh, Ipsity. So there you go. Uh, fifth book in that series. Uh, also out is the third book in the Adventures of Hork, uh, Beyond the Boss, the Liberty Adventure. And uh, Stuart Gross's, what is it, volume 18? Yeah, volume 18. There's lots of X and Vs in here. Uh, of Rule Free VR MMO Life, uh, volume again uh, 18 of that series called Divine Favors out for those of you who were into that series. Again, that one's very... Um, more adult oriented. I believe the main character is like a uh, chaotic evil. So he does like legitimately disturbing things in that series, which is why I'm not reviewing it. I don't read it anymore, but it, it is out. And I always want to make sure that fans who enjoy the series know that their stories are, even if they're not things I personally uh, plan to read. Okay. Uh, also out as new audiobooks. We have a couple titles here as well. Uh, Betrayal, a little bit of adventure, Monster Maces and Magic Volume 2. The second book in that series is out as an audiobook. Uh, Back in the Game, Blood Feast, book number two, is out as an audiobook. Uh, First Login Chronicles, book number one, is out as an audiobook. And I should let you know that the cover art for this novel, uh, for the audiobook, does not match the novel. Uh, like the author has uh, said um, online that he, he intentionally has decided to use different cover art for every single novel in the series. And I I'm assuming and also now the, the audiobook as well. And it's a, it's a distinctive choice. Um, so uh, if it doesn't quite match what you've already read, as far as the cover art goes, that just letting you know, uh, but this was an interesting story when I read it. Uh, also out as an audiobook is Gestation, uh, Project Chrysalis book number one. That's a Russian title that was translated to English. Um, very interesting things happen. There you go. I'm not sure what the audiobook sounds like. I enjoyed the, I did enjoy the ebook though. Okay, uh, on to upcoming Little BG. These are titles that I know are coming up in the near future. Um, there are a few new editions of this list as well. So uh, that includes on December the 27th, Finding a Body, the last book in the Dark Gribblest series. The author of that series has come out recently saying this is the last book in this series. Uh, he might return to it at some point, but this is going to be the last one uh, in the Dark Herbalist series. Uh, also out on January, tw on January 1st, I should say, is Break, Evo, Evo Born, book number one. On January the 1st, it'll be uh, the sixth book in the System Apocalypse series called Worlds Unbound. On <laughs> January 1st, it'll also be Rexus, a side quest uh, in the Completionist Chronicles, book number three. So this is um, this is from Dakota. I, I know Dakota. We've had a few chats uh, before, and he told me about this earlier. And he's like, oh, no, this, this entire story came off of a joke. Um, and it, it seems super entertaining, but if you even just look in the cover, I, I can't help but giggle. So, um, it'll be out on January the 1st though. On January the 9th, it'll be level up the knockout book number one, which is a, um, set in the level up universe, different main character though. On January the 11th, it'll be dungeon wars from Jeffrey Falcon Logue. Uh, so if you like his other stuff, you might see some familiar characters and dungeons in here. Uh, but it'll be out on January the 11th. On January the 19th, it'll be The Steel Hounds, the Atar Chronicles book number one. This one's a little iffy for me. Uh, reading the description, it doesn't really sound like Clutter BD. It sounds like a story that's set in VR. Um, but it, it does describe itself in the novel description as being a little RPG. So we're going to give it the benefit off for now until I have a chance to read it, uh, which will be on January the 19th. On January the 29th, it'll be Neverfall, Catacombs, book number two. February the 14th, it'll be four. I'm uh, sorry. Um, it'll be called For the Loot, uh, a Liberty Game Adventure. The Good Guys 
series book number four. So we're reviewing book number three in the series today. The fourth book, which is the next one, will be out on February the 14th. So there you go, folks. Now on to new releases and reviews. And in new releases and reviews, folks, we're going to begin with our first review, uh, The Great Filter, a post-apocalyptic game-lit novel written by Russell uh, Wolbinski. Okay, this is 214 pages. It is $3.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Um, here we go. Uh, it is the author's description. The end of the world had arrived just as many predicted in a global exchange of nuclear weapons. But no one predicted, what no one predicted was the sudden message that appeared before every living soul moments before impact. A message from the administrators revealing our entire world and everything in it is a, to be a species simulation. According to the message, humanity had been reset over a million times and every single time we could not prevent our own extinction. No more resets for humanity no more chances. They would leave our world in a radiated disaster, but to keep things interesting, they would convert our species simulation to a game for their twisted entertainment. Digital or not, real or not, I have a family to protect, a wife and a daughter who need me. Universe be damned. I say, bring it on. Welcome to the end of the world. Welcome to the great filter. So there we go. Again, it's 214 pages, $3.99. That is available on Kingdom Limited. Um, this is essentially a little RPG apocalypse story. Um, the game portion of the story is divided into two sections. Uh, the assessment section and also the RPG section, the RPG apocalypse section. And the only reason I mentioned the division is that because a lot of the RPG aspects of the story don't begin until after the assessment section. Stuff like character sheets, stats, perks, um, you know, hit points and a bunch of like... Ed- progression stuff. Uh, they don't start until after the assessment section. So if you're reading that first half part of it and it doesn't really feel like liberty, that's okay. It gets much better after, after that, like there's a lot more crunchiness to it. Um, the entire novel though, does a really good job of bringing like the zombie apocalypse vibe out in the story. Um, there are survival elements, there are monsters of fights, there are survivors to recruit, survivors to fear. And these elements are all combined with an RPG mechanics that are pulled from like Fallout and Metro The Last Light. Um, and, and and I mean that in very good ways. I love both those, the, both those series. Um, game mechanic wise, things are pretty thorough again after the assessment section. There are X, there's XP, there are skills, stats, item descriptions, some base building mechanics. Um, additionally, there are purchasable perks that are very, again, very reminiscent from Fallout uh, in like their quirky names and descriptions. And also there's a slug currency system it reminds me of again, something pulled from the Metro series. Um, in particular, I did like the fact that XP felt like a precious resource, the same way that food or water uh, or other resources would in the game. Um, and th- XP could also be earned for non combat activities like crafting or exploration. Really good stuff. I enjoyed um, the variety of the ways that the characters could advance. Overall, it's a very good RPG apocalypse story. Again, I should warn you that, uh, like a lot of uh, like zombie apocalypse stories, um, things can get kind of dark at some, at some point. So just be aware of that when you go into it. And I think you have a good time. For me, good score seven point six out of ten. Had a nice time with it. Um, that's the Great Filter, a post apocalyptic game lit novel with a score seven point six out of ten. So there you go. Short review. Um, here's the second one, the Song Matron, a literary journey, Uniworld world online book number. Th- trilogy book number three. So this is the last book in the series. Um, the other says that he might come back at some point and do something else with this universe. But for now, this will be it. Uh, it is about 300 pages. Again, there's no official page count from Amazon yet for some reason on this novel. Um, it is $3.99. So it is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Cadence. The extraordinarily powerful bar-based song mistress is back for the final installment of the Uniworld Alliance trilogy. Joined by her friends, she embarks on a journey to somehow bring peace to Uniworld, all while avoiding attempts from her own faction to kill her. Now knowing about who brutally attacked her, if not his real-life persona, Cadence must get stronger, learn more about her abilities, and devise a strategy for him to confess to his involvement. To do that, however, she needs to survive long enough, which is going to be hard with the entirety of the light faction out to get her with the only avenue for escape among their enemies 
Cadence and her friends travel to the Dark Faction, where she learns much-needed information regarding one of her oldest and most important quests. From that information stems an expedition into the unknown, which will bring her closer to her goal and her destiny. Is Cadence strong enough to embrace her fate and bring justice to her attackers? Find out in the thrilling conclusion to the Uniworld Online Trilogy today. Hmm, not bad. Um... It's a really easy review. Uh, this is the end of the Uniworld Online Trilogy. It does a good job of resolving all the story threads. It really is hard, I think, uh, after two or three books, to like, make keep track of everything, but the author did a good job. He resolved just about everything. Um, there are a few pieces of the story where I was like, oh, that smells a little horsed. Um, and a couple of times where the main character was like clearly OP or like some item that she created was. Um, but... Again, this is this is a resolution story. It is trying to tie up everything very nicely, and it does so. The big resolution at the end honestly made uh, all those little tiny like things that might have been a little annoying to me totally worth it. Um, and and I forgot to plead about them with that nice resolution at the very end. Everything wraps up very nicely and satisfactorily, really, as far as I'm concerned. I had a good nice time with it. Uh, Gets score seven point four out of ten. The song matron again. That's uh, the song matron. A little bit of journey um, with the score seven point four out of ten. Okay, next. Uh, True Hero Champion is playing. Uh, this is written by two authors. We just have their last names. It's uh, these are Russian authors, by the way. Um, Emelianov and Sevenov. It's hard to tell the, the font. It does not make this easier to, to tell what their names are. Okay, uh, it is 243 pages. It is $3 even. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, here's the author's description. A simple man, lacking in knowledge, but quick of wit. He is flung into the future where everything is different. Now he has to make a name for himself, carve his own path in life. He decides to play a game, the biggest one in the world, a strategy game focused on tactics, used to select the top managers of the largest international corporation. Now he has to prove his mettle and earn a place for himself in the future. Watch as he enters the competition, chooses his class, creates an army, and shows everyone in this new, future world the spirit of a player from the 2010s. Will he be the champion in the end? And that's what it says, folks. And again, this is kind of a just a thing with translations from other languages. Things don't always sound quite perfect. Uh, full disclosure, I received a man's copy of the novel for review. I purchased the copy of the novel, I should say, when it became available. Um, this is a, a translation of a popular Russian literature novel that incorporates real-time strategy elements, competitive play, as well as more traditional RPG elements like levels, classes, HP, and mana. Um, according to the translator, uh, the story is also considered rather humorous in Russia. Um, I think some of that is lost in translation. Uh, like, I didn't find it super hilarious, but I, I could see, like, there are things in there that are running gags and things like, oh, I guess that could be funny if it was like phrased differently or if like it was a trope in, in English, maybe, I don't know. Um, but there are def still definitely some good humorous moments in the story, even, even with the translation issues. Um, the story revolves around a massive, full immersion, competitive RTS game, a real-time strategy game, where success means getting a good paying job in this futuristic society. Um, I did think that there was like that word aspect of like the main character being transported to the future 50 years. Um, like, okay, that's, that's curious. And I think it kind of just was there to justify some of the weird situational comedy that may or may not land to people. Um, uh, so interesting things in the beginning. Um, in this future world, though, even doing do, do moderately well in this game means doubling your current salary. Uh, the front runners, of course, in the, in, in the competition are rich and powerful aristocrats who have trained their whole lives for tournaments like this. And again, they are called aristocrats. Remember, this is written in Russia uh, for a Russian audience. So there are going to be some cultural themes that might not um, 100% like makes always the sense. Uh, so just, you know, again, just be aware. Um then the main character comes in. He's willing to do the most unconventional strategies and tactics to get an edge. The story uh, re revolves around the main character and his unusual and often lucky strategies. It kind of hits the cycle, to be honest. Um, it's the main character. He he, does, he goes on adventures. He does some actioning stuff. He 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 tries to advance his, his way in the competition for whatever goals hit there or set there. Um, and then the, I thought this was curious that the, the story is kind of retold, like those events from his defeated enemy's point of view. So this is a multi, um, multi-narrative structured story. We're getting to see the main character, what he does. And then the next chapter is like, Oh, it, it's, it's the same events from a different point of view. Like usually the person that he beat. Um, and 
those characters, those other like people we meet often kind of contribute, attribute, um, their defeat to like, oh, the main character's genius or, and not just him taking advantage of lucky situations. And it kind of cycles that way. Um, with each battle, battle getting progressively bigger and more epic, eventually becoming something that requires like multiple alliances, legions of powerful troops, complex tactics on both sides. And again, even though the story does cycle through that same kind of setup, it's never boring. It really isn't. Um, there are always new powers, new minions, new upgrades, new tactics, new allies or enemies. And of course, the fights always increase its epicness until it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe uh, it's like this huge fight. Um, and game mechanic wise, I think um, the novel really is a good job of like combining RTS mechanics uh, and bringing them into life uh, without like the tedious resource gathering. That's a part of like those kind of genres of games. The main character initially has to choose a class option um, and a starting strategy. Since he chooses a very unconventional math, he actually gets new options opening up to him. They give him an edge. Um, he gets unique units that he can upgrade. His stat choices do have an effect on, on uh, in battle. Uh, and eventually there are king to building elements in the game, even though they're a little, and take a little while to come into play. Um, there's still, again, the same RPG aspects, though. Um, levels, HP, mana, armor, damage notifications, classes, special skills, abilities, etc. All that great stuff. So it's a very RPG as well. Um, and even though, like, towards the end of the story, some of that personal growth for them, key main character, uh, I should say, uh, level growth isn't as important. Um, it's, again, emphasizing the RPG aspects a little bit more. Um it's still fun. It's for, it's a very entertaining story. I really, I should, personally, I think again that the real time strategy aspects are really combined very well with the RPG aspects, and it's a very interesting story. Like it, it's very much about that competitive play, though. So if you like those kind of games, you like those kind of stories, I think you're really gonna enjoy this. Um, I see the action in the beginning of the novel is probably a little bit light as the story is getting set up, but it again very quickly becomes like really good battles, really good fights. Um, the switching point of views are a little confusing once you recognize them. I'm like, personally, I, I, I didn't recognize the first time it happened. I was like, I was just reading along. I was like, didn't I just read this? Like, why am I reading the same thing? And it's, then again, because it's told from the per person perspective, um, it's just a lot of, oh, I saw this, I did this. And I'm like, <laughs> I, did, I basically didn't notice the little subheading where it said, oh, this is the name of the character whose point of view this is. And so I was confused for a little bit. Um, but once I recognized, I was like, oh, okay, this is not, that's what they're doing. Uh, so that, that's the reason I mentioned because I was genuinely confused the first time it happened. Um, it actually turns in like a really neat way of seeing things in battle that the main character didn't personally see. And it, again, that's a, it's a nice way to tell a story. Um, it's also, I think, a running gag that his enemies think he's a genius when he's essentially super lucky and he's also taking advantage of that luck, um, which I think is also a common theme through a lot of like Russian loaded RPG stories. Um, overall, good story, had some very nice large scale action that just drew, drew you in. Um, and I, I, I read this entire thing through like in one in one sitting um, just to see how all the action played out. So really enjoyable to me. Get the score 7.7 7 out of 10. Um, True Hero Champion is playing book number one. Letter BG series uh, with a score of 7.7 7 out of 10. There we go. Okay, next. Uh, Rogue Games, a lit RPG adventure written by Angie A. Huxley. It is 313 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Limited, and here's the author's description. Matthew Morgan used to be the best thief in the business. No lock was too hard to pick, no safe was too secure for him to crack. But when he was double-crossed by an associate and sent to the penitentiary, he didn't just lose decades of his life, no. He lost the agility and quick reflexes that made him such a successful professional. Now, freshly out of prison, old Matthew has to find a way to survive in a world that he evolved without him. Robbing art galleries was all he knew. But if his mind is still sharp and his body, m and his body is no longer what he used to be, so he tries to find an honest job, something to pay the rent and secure him some food, but who's going to hire an ex-con? No options seem open to him, that is, until he learns about some virtual game called Federation of Feud. According to an old acquaintance of his, there's money to be made there for people with their kind of expertise. Skeptically, Matthew gives it a go and all of the venues seem close to him. He figures he has nothing to lose and so he joins the game as a rogue. The very first sessions leave him perplexed as he... As, being a low-level character, he's still limited in what he can do. But as he sticks with it and gains enough experience, he finds that his former occupation does give him an edge over other players. Soon he's raiding dungeon solos, using his stealth to navigate the dangerous grounds and his lockpicking skills to unlock treasure chests. Soon he's making real money. But still, 
He needs to act fast. Whatever small cash he has left is dwindling fast, and with rent to pay and food to put on the table, he needs to up his game if he's to ensure his survival both in and outside the game. Wow, that is a long, that is a long description for your novel. Um, it's honestly longer than my review. Uh, this is honestly one of those tedious stories I read in a while. The main character kind of just wanders around the game, world exploring, fighting monsters occasionally, leveling up so that he can hit level 10 and unlock the ability to transfer game currency into real money. That's the big goal for the story. Um, and unfortunately, with the exception of the um, occasional times he meets other players, a lot of the story um, felt to me at least that it was more described as a fantasy, not as an MMO. Um, there are MMO mechanics. This is absolutely what it be. The, the main character does level. Um, he does increase his power. Um, and it's just that there are like these really long stretches where the main character is by himself. And he's just, he's, we get descriptions of the fantasy or his interaction with NPCs. And it's all very, again, fantasy described. Uh, and it's just kind of a disappointment that it felt like the RPG game elements were really kind of minimized in, in every other location, except for like the places where he was interacting intentionally with other players. Um, and, and that was just a, a, definitely a drawback for me. Um, and, and just a, not a lot of things happen here. Um, the, again, the game notifications are seen um, regularly. Like, they don't seem to matter to the story though. Uh, about 90% of the time, they aren't even not in the story by the maker. And that, that was another thing kind of was a turnoff for me is that what, even though you've seen game notifications about like damage or item descriptions fairly regularly in the story, um, it's it's one of the things like you can kind of tell like they were inserted in into the story after it was already written. Because if you read the paragraph before and you read the paragraph after it, um, it it's like the notification doesn't exist. Like the main character again, 90% of the time doesn't even acknowledge that notification appeared. Um, and, 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 and it's kind of a frustrating, and that's absolutely not the choice. I'm not criticizing that in particular. It's just that that I, I can tell, like you can tell that those notifications uh, were essentially inserted after the story was written. And if you, and, and honestly, the story flows better without the notification there. And that's again, one of the clues like, oh, this notification was inserted in post. Um, so it's just one of those things. I, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, oh, and I'm sorry. Another thing kind of bothered me was that the real world storyline doesn't need to exist in this novel for any reason. Um, the main character logs out of the game fairly regularly and it just seems like a distraction and it really interrupts the flow of the, of the, of the in-game storyline. And they really doesn't seem to like serve a purpose other than like saying, Oh, he has to sleep or he's, he's, he's running out of money or he's, you know, he's hungry and he has to use the restroom or something, right? Uh, and so it, it was just kind of a distraction as well. So for all those reasons, for me, um, I got really bored of the story very quickly. Um, I did finish it, but it was like, oh, okay, that's meh, meh, very meh for me. Uh, Gets a score of five out of 10. That's the real game, a little bit adventure uh, with a score of five out of 10. There you go. Okay. On to uh, Realm of Noria, a Libby series, book number one, The Birth, written by Paul Kite. It is 266 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. The vast forests of the Elven Kingdom, full of wild animals, the wastelands of the orcs, with ever-present drought and death, the dwarven mountains, on top of which wyverns and harpies have built their nests. The majestic Ilian Ridge that protects the great lands from the evil of the Sunset Empire, cursed by all the gods. Craven has a new home now, the world of Noria. It would be great if he were just a carefree traveler in this beautiful world, but it's not that simple. His body is imprisoned in a regeneration capsule, and an imprisonment he needs to live. And his mind is now part of this new virtual world. Who is he now? What is he? He's become an unusual player, a unique bit of code that has appeared as a result of a system error. All he has now is his character and his will to go on. His goal is to become stronger and survive in this cruel new world. And who could be stronger than The Shadows, the most famous Assassin's Guild in Noria? There you go, folks. That is the author's description of the novel. Um, 
And again, this is a Russian translation of a series that, according to the author, has like a five book series in Russian, and he plans to get them all translated. Um, he also has apparently another little bit of series, sci-fi series that he also plans to get translated. So we might be seeing a lot more from Paul Kite. Um, as a translation, though, be aware that, uh, again, there are issues associated with that, including, um, I think, this one a little more than the last one. Some phrases don't translate perfectly from Russian. And also there are just like some odd uh, colloquisms or... Um, I forget what they're called. There's another like English word for um, words, like phrases, like, like like phrases that are unique to a language. I should say um, things like "oh, a happy 13 or just like um, the game notification going "ring ring" instead of like "oh ding" or something. Uh, so just like a lot of little things like that. So just be aware. Uh, now, as to the review part goes, uh, the story doesn't work for me. Like it just kind of misses being good. Like there there are some good elements to it that I enjoyed, um, but on the whole, I thought that. Um, some things were missing. Uh, so for me, the setup is you know, trapped in the game with the main character not being able to access uh, the outside world through game features, so he's kind of stuck there. Um, the, the the setup is, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but it's stuck in the game. Um, there are some minor storylines about the outside world, like his parents or his dad and his friend and his girlfriend trying to look for him in game, but it doesn't really amount to anything. Um, they are just, they end up being like used to introduce other characters, but they're not really characters that are inter that are interacting with the main character in any way, shape or form throughout the entire story. Um, and I think it's more like setups for like plot lines for like book two, three, four, five, whatever. Um, but here they don't really mean much. Um, the in-game storyline is again, a little bit confusing, uh, not so much in what happens, but how it's able to happen. And again, I can't give you details without getting too spoilery, uh, but the main character essentially has this storyline um, where it feels like it belongs more in a normal fantasy story or transported to a game world story, not necessarily one set in a VR MMO. Essentially, things happen to the main character where it's like, oh, the game mechanics disappear for a little bit in the middle. And again, it, it can contextually makes sense. Um, the author describes how that makes sense, how it does happen. But it's also like, oh, that... That that seems like something that would happen in a fantasy story, or again in a in a, in a transported to a game world story, where like it's a regular fantasy story with RPG mechanics, not necessarily in one with set in a virt virtual reality MMORPG, where like everything is coded, where every while the NPCs are coded and they're all of scripts or whatever the case is. Um, so it felt a little bit out of place, and it kind of again, that that part didn't really work for me because it didn't make sense contextually in my brain where it's like, oh, I'd expect these things from a different kind of story, not one set in a, in, in, in an MMO, basically. Um, the game mechanics in the story are fairly detailed and there are some very, again, believable moments, MMO moments, when the main character interacts with players. And that unfortunately happens super rarely and it happens mostly at the beginning and the end of the story. And again, it's just that middle section that I was just like, oh, that's... That is interesting. It doesn't quite mesh with my brain and what I what makes sense in an MMO for me. But again, uh, it is what it is. Um, there, let's see what else. Uh, but the character sheet, again, the game mechanic stuff. It's all there. Character sheet, stats, item descriptions, quests, XP, the whole thing. Um, again, a couple things fell out place, but I mentioned that already. Um, overall, a really decent story. Nothing's poorly written. Uh, again, there are some translation issues um, and and a few things that just fell off because of. Again, it's written originally in Russia for a Russian audience. Uh, and so there are a few things like, oh, that's that's curious. So that doesn't quite sound right a lot of times. Uh, but again, nothing I think that's going to like ruin the story for anybody. There's good action here. Uh, again, a lot of RPG stuff. And that's again, fairly consistent with the exception, like this little section. But even then, contextually, that makes sense why it doesn't exist there. Um, but the story overall ends up kind of just being slice of life. Um, you follow the main character around. He trains. He does some other stuff that happens to him. And besides a couple like interesting mini story arcs, that's kind of it. Um, they're also a thing that kind of like was like, oh, that's is that there's a there's definitely a the story just kind of ends without any resolution of any of the big plot lines that are established in the story. So it's very much like, oh, we're doing things, things and like, bam, we're just done. Uh, and it kind of leaves, I'm going to say it's a cliffhanger. It's just like the story just kind of stops and it's almost like you can continue on all the great adventures or all the things that really matter the plot line in book two and for me that's just like oh that's that's a, that's that's that i'm like okay that's it is what it is uh it, it was a little frustrating to me which is why again it's this is a six out of ten for me 
um, because it just didn't fulfill my expectations, I guess, of what I was expecting from either the plot lines that are set up um, or the way they're set up, I guess. Uh, So just like I said, not necessarily a bad story. Um, It's not boring in any way, shape, or form. And again, if those things aren't going to bother you, you have a really good time with this. I'm really sure you are. For me, though, it's just like, oh, it just kind of misses. So for me, it's, of course, 6 out of 10. That's Realm of Noria, Lit RPG Series, book number one, The Birth, uh, with the score 6 out of 10. There you go. Okay. Uh, one more review, folks. It's going to be Dungeon Mauling, a Little Bridge Game Lit novel, The Good Guys, book number three, written by Eric Ugland. So this one is 308 pages, $4.99. That is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. What do you do when the game resets around you? Joseph from Montana thought he had life in Voldarana Vol- uh, figured out. The rug is pulled out from under him. He's alone once again, but now he's in the crosshairs of the man who would be emperor, and a whole host of people are counting on Montana to provide a safe haven for them. Montana has one hope of actually completing his quest of forming a dukedom. He needs to bust Nikolai out of prison. A prison that no one has ever escaped from alive. A prison who only exists, uh, whose, whose only exit is little more than a rumor and probably doesn't even exist, through a sentient dungeon hell-bent on causing torture, inflicting pain, and extracting the ultimate price, life. Montana and his herdmen are down to their last chance, so they get themselves arrested and enter Osterdad Prison. Can the good guys do good by going bad? And the rest is uh, Denjima. Description of it as being what I read. Okay. Uh, Full disclosure, I received a man's copy for review. I purchased a copy when it became available. Um, This is a continuation of a good literature. I think this is one of my favorite series um, in the most recent months. Uh, Book one is really good. Book two is really great. Um, Like Generally, they're they're really good stories. Um, And this is a continuation of that good stuff. Uh, Though, uh, in the first early parts of this particular book, edition in the, in the series. Um, the RPG parts are a little bit lighter than I would have liked. Um, and this novel in particular, book three feels like a transitional, like really big plot events happen at the end of book two. I believe really big plot events happen in, in book four, uh, book three, which is what we're reading now, um, is kind of the transition between those two points and places. And again, that doesn't mean it's, it's poorly written or anything. It's just that, Oh, that's, it, it's 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 almost a novel that you can sort of I'm going to guess that you can kind of skip at some point, um, but it doesn't make it any less entertaining. It's just like oh, plot wise, the story doesn't advance a, a ton. Um, it's an entertaining story. It's essentially a dungeon crawl, um, and with a little bit of a cleanup for the big events that happened at the end of book two. Um, it, it's good action stuff. It's filled with dungeon diving and monsters and mazes and some really interesting story twists, especially in relation to like that cover. Uh, I was like, oh, that's like, that was really surprising. I was like, oh, that, that was neat. Um, but again, it does not advance the storyline very much. I think this is my least favorite of, of a series I think is really good. I, I like book one and book two. Book one um, was good. Book two is, is, is even better. Book three, again, is kind of my least favorite in the series, but again, that doesn't mean I don't like it. Is it, Again, it's highly entertaining, super good. Um, but again, it's a dungeon, not sense. It's, it's a dungeon crawl, and there are a lot of those out in Lenergy, and one of the things I really liked about the series in general is that each book felt unique. Each book felt like it was trying to do something different, and I think this is the novel that that feels the most traditional, feels the most like, oh, I've read Dungeon Dives before. And again, the events in the novel, in the Dungeon Dive, they're very interesting, they're very unique, uh, not very unique, but they're very, they're, they're good. But then I've read Dungeon Dive stories, I've read Dungeon Crawl stories before. So uh, like I said, um, the, my least favorite of them, but again, I like them all. I like this one. It gets a se- score of 7.6 out of 10. Um, but again, that's the lowest of all the series, which tells you I liked I like the series quite a bit. Um, and that's Dungeon Mauling, a Little Bridge Game novel, The Good Guys, book number three, with the score of 7.6 out of 10. Highly engaging, very good action, good dungeon crawl. There you go. And that's it. We're actually done, folks. The all the reviews that was the last one um you can follow us on facebook twitter youtube patreon on our webpage. page uh, we also have uh, links to other facebook groups who are a little bit oriented and of course if you want to support the podcast in any way shape or form and help us keep, keep the podcast free and going uh you can find out all the ways to do so at littlerpgpodcast.com slash support um and again that's it thanks folks for hanging out with me uh for for listening to me talk about little rpg a genre that i love um both reading in and and, and talking about 
Um, and until we can hang it again, folks, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>